Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is part one of the Mystery Amigurumi. This is week number one. Week number one we're gonna go through what you need and we're also going to start some components to be able to do your mystery. Let me tell you a little bit more about this mystery before we begin. If you've never done a mystery with us before it is actually a mystery. You have no idea what you're crocheting until the very end and we purposely mix up the pieces and the parts so that it's harder to guess. It's always a lot of fun on Facebook. We love to hear what you think it is as you go along and if you get it right we happen not to acknowledge if you are right. So because it is a mystery we do not tell you the color that you need to make your particular project. This project is not very big though and you need to commit to literally just one ball of yarn for the main project and then you can embellish with other things and we get through that in the video. In today's uh, tutorial I'm going to go with this Karen Simply Baby for my idea or you could do the Karen Simply Soft, you can do Bernat uh, Super Value, you could do the Stripes, you could do Karen Simply Party. What I would recommend is that you don't get any chunky yarn. So don't get any yarn that requires a bigger hook or anything like that. So just stick with the main brands just like so. You can mix and match your brands if you wish. That's completely up to you. So what are you gonna need for this particular project? So what you're going to need for this particular project is two sizes of crochet hooks. You'll need a three and a half millimeter uh, size E and you'll also need a four millimeter size G. I just happen to be holding that right now. You'll need a small bag of stuffing. You'll need a yarn needle and a stitch marker and literally this project is not that big so you don't have to commit to a lot of yarn. So this is a great stash busting uh, product or project that you would want to do. There's nothing in this project that I would classify as overly complex. It's actually quite a bit of fun and you can do multiple of these at the same time because at the end we're going to be collecting your photos through email and you can be in the nice uh, Hall of Fame gallery in order to showcase your project. So because we don't tell you what it is everybody's project ends up slightly different and it's amazing how many arrays of colors that we can uh, get out of one particular project. In the more information of this video I'm going to provide you a link and that you can download a PDF where you can do a checkbox of everything that you're going to need. So you have all the instructions and this has been prepared by our friends Kevin and Karen and uh, they did a great job with it and they did check boxes as you go along. So you just check off the box as you go along. There's pictures of what you're trying to accomplish within this and it becomes really quite simple in order to follow. So each week we will have a new PDF for you. So if you have a little hooker, hookers journal journal where you can keep everything and just uh, print it off and keep it safe. But if you don't have a printer you, you can just follow it on your screen as well to be able to go along. It's really quite a simple project as I stated here. So the, the, rea the reality of this whole project is that the gauge does not matter. So as long as that your hook it matches your yarn or is complementary and you use the same kind of uh, hook size and the yarn throughout your project you should not have a problem. So without further ado let's uh, begin to do this project together. So let's start off. We're going to be doing five parts within today's video and some of these parts require you to do two because it might make sense. <laughs> I'm going to be doing mine in Karen Simply Soft uh, Baby, Simply Baby and uh, mine's going to be variegated. So if that gives you any clues don't be reading too much between the stitches honey because that may not be right. Let's start off with the magic ring and the magic rings are pretty well what we're gonna start off with anything else. Some people don't like magic rings. If you have another way of preferring to do the starting then that's up to you. Okay so that is your own creativity. I'm not gonna dock you points. So to do a magic ring you have the string in front of you and you just wrap it around two fingers and come up and over your fingers on a diagonal. Insert your hook under the first string, grab the second and then just wheel back and just get that string once again and pull through. And this is your magic ring just like so. So you wanna keep your straggler and your ring together like this. You're also going to need a stitch marker. So let me get my stitch marker up and I'll be right back. So I have my stitch marker on the side. It's just spare yarn that I would drag through the stitches. We do a continuous round so that we don't have any seams within your project. So to start with we're going to do six uh, single crochets into the main ring, MR's main ring. So here we go and we're just gonna insert into the ring and just grab through and just single crochet as normal. So one and two, three, four, five and six. 
So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna pull the straggler now and I'm gonna pull it nice and tight and that'll form a ring and when we go to start the next part we're gonna immediately start on the first stitch over here. And so what I like to do is I just verify so I can see one, two, three, four, five, and six. But before I go on I want to just pull up a loop and insert underneath like so and I wanna grab my stitch marker and pull a portion of that string through and this will mark the starting and stopping of every time I go around. So every time I go and finish a round I wanna move the stitch marker up even higher. So let me put in my hook, tighten everything back in and so now this stitch marker represents the start and the stop of my stitches. So let me move on to the next round. Now round two to six is the same thing as you see in the instructions and you'll see those empty boxes in the instructions. So you just check those off as you go. So you immediately just jump over and you just go right into the very first stitch and we're doing one single crochet into each. So we go one and then we go to the next one, two, three, four, now I shouldn't have to count, I just count because I'm counting. I have no reason why I'm counting because I just have to go to the stitch marker. It's just a habit of crochet, I count too much stuff I tell you. So I'm gonna come into my very last one where that stitch marker is and I'm going to do that one. Now what I wanna do is that I wanna move that stitch marker up so I'm just gonna pull up. So I'm gonna just show you how to do this once. I'm gonna pull up and I'm gonna grab a piece of that string again and pull it through and by the time I'm done this whole section is that you'll see that the string has been dragged all the way throughout the project. So that was round two. I need you to finish up to round six. Go and look at the instructions and just do the exact same thing of just putting one single crochet and then every time you pass the stitch marker move it up and then uh, basically check it off on your list. So do, uh, do the remainder of three to six now. Okay so I've completed rounds two to six on my own and now this was kind of finicky. Now it's gonna get bigger. So round number seven we're going to do two single crochets in a row and then the next one is an increase. Every time you see INC that's an increase so that we put two um, crochet um, single crochets in. So the first two is gonna be one single crochet each. So one and two and then the next one is going to have the increase so there will be two single crochets. I'm just grabbing apply by accident here. Let me just fix that. So the next one is an increase. So there will be two single crochets into this one here. Okay and we gotta repeat that again. So there's gonna be uh, the first, next two are gonna be one single crochet each and look at that. Where you finish, see the stitch marker? That's the final one and that one has two uh, single crochets into that one. So that means that this is right. So we've actually just now increased our rounds from six to eight stitches by doing this. Once you get that last one in don't forget to move that stitch marker up so you know exactly where you are on this particular project. So let's move on to round number eight. Now rounds number eight, nine, and ten. Again there's three boxes there. It's going to be one single crochet each. So whatever we're doing is getting bigger slowly. So we're just gonna go around each one of the stitches and put one single crochet in in each one and then move that stitch marker up once we get to that, that particular part. Okay so we're gonna do this for rounds number eight through ten so there's a total two, uh, two rounds. So make sure you check off those boxes as you go around so that you don't forget where you are. So I just completed now round number eight and I'm gonna move my stitch marker up next and then I'm gonna do nine and ten. So please do nine and ten on your own. We'll see you back on number 11. Okay now eight through ten are now done and let's move on to round number 11. Round number 11 says three single crochets and then an increase. So the first three are going to be one single crochet each and then the next one is going to be an increase. So there will be two single crochets into that one. So this is one and two and you do that, repeat that again. So let's do that. So the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three and if your counts are right the very final one with the stitch marker should be the one that has the final two in it. So this one has two and move your stitch marker up and that concludes round number 11.
Let's start round number 12. 12 through 15 are identical. They are just one single crochet into each. So just single crochet around and do this for the next four rounds. So 12, 13, 14 and 15 are now one single crochet each. Please do that now. I'll see you back up and we'll start round number 16 together. Okay round number 16 we're gonna move up and go four single crochets in a row and then an increase. So we'll do that. So one, two, three and four and then the next one is going to be an increase. So there will be two in that one. So one and two and do that once again. So just the next four. So one, two, three and four and then the final one has the stitch marker and that one happens to have the two in there which means that my counts are still accurate at this point. So that is round number 16. So move up your marker. Let's start the next one. Okay round number 17 and 18 are the same thing. So they're just one single crochet into each going all the way around. So please do rounds number 17 and 18 with just one single crochet into each stitch going around. Okay let's start round number 19. 19 is five single crochets and then one increase. So let's do the next five. So one, there are single crochets each, two, three, four and five and then the next one is it there's two in there that's the increase. So one and two. Okay so do it again. So one, two, three, four and five and then the next one is an increase and this is the last one with the stitch marker in it so it means that my counts are still right. So one and so put two into that last one and move up your stitch marker and that concludes round number 19. Let's move along to rows number 20 and 21. Rounds 20 to 21. They're just one single crochet into each. So please do one single crochet into each for rounds number 20 to and 21 and I'll meet you back here and we'll start number 22. Moving along to round number 22. We have six single crochets and then an increase. So the first six are going to be by themselves. So one, two and three four, five and six and then that means that the next one is an increase. So it's two in that one and then do it again. So again one through six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then an increase which is the last one as you can see with the stitch marker. So it means that my counts are still right. So okay so let's move along to round number 23 next. Round number 23 is simple. Just one single crochet into each going all the way around. Please do that. We'll meet you back up and start round number 24. Round number 24 we start playing a little differently. So we're gonna do four single crochets in a row and then an increase and we're gonna do that three times. This will lead an odd, odd number in the end so that's why it says there's a single crochet at the end. So let's do, begin to do that. So we're go gonna do four. So one, two, three and four and then it says to do an increase. So we're gonna do an increase. So one and two. Do it again. So one, two, three and four and then the next one is an increase. So there will be two in that one and then do it again. So one, two, three and four and then the, the increase. See how the stitch marker is one over? That's why it's asking you to do one single crochet at the end. So then the last one is a single crochet by itself. So move up that stitch marker and that concludes round number 24. Let's do rounds 25 and 26 together and it's just one single crochet into each. So just do rounds 26, 25 and 26 to get and just do one single crochet into each and I'll see you back and we'll do number 27 together. Okay rounds number 25, 26 are now done. Let's do number 27. This one is uh, five uh, single crochets and then an increase. Okay so let's do that. So it's gonna be five this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six 
okay, oh sorry, they had to do five. The sixth one here should be two in that one. So it's five, sorry about that. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. And then this one is number six which is gonna have two in there. And do that again one more time. So one, two, three, four, and five. And the next one is going to be um, um, two in that one. And then you see it says a single crochet. So the single crochet is the final one. You see that there's the stitch marker. So it finishes off with a single crochet by itself. So move your stitch marker up and we have one more round to do and then we're gonna leave this and then this part of the project is done. So let's do number 28 together. This is the final round of this particular component of your character. And this is just one single crochet into each. After you have this done, we're just going to pull a generous string out from the ball and we're going to leave it because we need to sew this to the character at some point in the future. So don't cut your strings too early or too short. So just one single crochet into each. Really like this uh, color yarn too. It's gonna be quite cool. I'm kinda doing it on purpose just to throw you off track on what it could be. Just remember week one clue is that I can swim and I'm good at um, and I'm good at it. Okay. So we're just coming all the way back around to the stitch marker. And I'm going to stop on the last one like so. And I just completely stop and I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut a generous lengthening string so I can leave this. So you're gonna want to use this in, uh, leave this in a shoe box or something because you won't need it until the very end of this particular series. I'm so we're gonna have to stuff it at a later time but right at this particular moment uh, you don't have to do anything just leave it safe and then we're gonna start on with part number two. Let's move along to part number two and this is another little component and we need two of these. So I'm only gonna show you once and then you could do the other one on your own. So let's begin. You can always reverse the video if you need to follow along. So let's start off with a magic ring. I already showed you how to do that once. So I'm not gonna waste your time in this video to go through that again. Okay, so there it is there. So let's uh, begin and it says to do seven single crochets into the magic ring. MR is magic ring. So we're just going to just uh, single crochet seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And what I want to do is pull the ring. I wanna pull that string like we did before and I wanna grab a stitch marker and I'm gonna grab another one and just insert it underneath this last stitch so I know exactly how many times I've gone around. So my stitch marker is now in so I know this is a stop and start. So the next one, round number two is an increase times seven. So the next, all these stitches that we're gonna do, we're gonna put in two single crochets into each. So one and two. And just keep doing that one and two. And then the next one, one and two. 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 And then this is where the stitch marker is. So that's obviously where I stopped before. So this is the last one. So one and two. And I'm gonna move up my stitch marker and move on to round number three. Now rounds number three to eight are all the same. So they're a single crochet into each all the way around. You see all the boxes in the, in the pattern. So just check those boxes as you do each one of the rounds just like you would have done on the other component. Oh, I almost said what the other component was. <laughs> okay, complete now row, rows number, or rounds number three to eight now and I'll see you back on number nine. Just one single crochet into each and move that stitch marker each time. So let's move on to round number nine and 10 and nine and 10 are unusual. So what we're going to dar start with is we're going to do four slip stitches in a row. The reason for that is if you look at the actual pattern you'll notice that whatever we're doing has a slight bend in it. So let's uh, begin to do that. So we're going to do slip stitching. So just insert, pull through and through. Just wanna be easy about it. Don't make it too tight. So two, three, 
and four. And this will make the stitches kind of collapse and make them shorter. And then what it says, it says do six half double crochets. So now we're gonna start in the next one, wrap first, pull through, pull through two, or sorry, pull through them all. So that was one out of six. So two, this is three, four, this is five, and number six. And then it says to do four slip stitches. So this will take you right back to the start. So just one, two, three, and four. Let's move up that stitch marker just so we don't lose our spot. And we need to do that same thing one more time and stick with me. I'm not gonna say to repeat without you. So let's uh, continue to, along. So let's just tighten everything back up and get it back in our hands. Let's do that round one more time. So the first four are slip stitches. So one and two three and four. Okay, the next six are half double crochet. So wrap first. So we got one. Just gonna get it, make sure I get it right. That's two. This is three. Four. Five and six. And then the last four are our slip stitches. So one, two, three, and four is where the slip marker is, or stitch marker is. So that is meaning I'm ending up in the right spot. So move up that stitch marker one more time. It's gonna be really tight on the front side of this where I'm looking at it right now from the front side and that's because it's got all the slip stitches but because we have done that the whatever it is that we're about to do we'll be able to have a bend in it that's permanent. So let's move along to rows number uh, our round number 11 next. Okay round number 11 we're gonna still continue that this side that we're looking at right now is gonna still be shorter than the other side and the other side to keep that bend. So the first four stitches are gonna be one single crochet each one and two, three, and number four. Okay, and now the next six are going to be half double crochets again, so it's continuing to allow that back side to bend. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the final four are going to be one single crochet each. So one, and that was gonna be two if I didn't drop my stitch, two, three, and four is your final. So you're right back where we started. So it means my counts are correct. And I'm gonna move up that stitch marker and move along to round number 12 next. Now before you continue along with round number 12, I want you to put some stuffing inside of here so that it's, it keeps its fullness. It's easier to do it right now before you do step number, to, uh, round number 12. So let's begin to do round number 12. So just stuff it if, uh, and just put me on hold. And then if not, if you're ready to go, let's go. So here we're gonna go. So it says three single crochets in a row. So the first three are gonna be a single crochet by themselves. So one, two, and three. Okay. Now it says to do a decrease times four. So that means that we're gonna do four decreases in a row. So we just insert in to the first one, insert the next one. Okay. So we're gonna do two together and that's for one of four. Let's do it again. So one and two. This is two of four. 
one and two. This is three of four and then just do the final um, here. So this is the final. So this will be four of four. It's always a little harder to hold once you start stuffing your item. So you'll see me struggling a bit. That's kind of normal. Okay, so we got our four in there and then we're going to, um, before we get back to the end, we have to have three um, single crochets left before we get to that spot. Okay, so we're just one. And two. Okay, and three. So we're gonna now carry on to round number 13 next. And make sure you move up that stitch marker too. Round number 13, really simple. Just one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So please do that now and I'll meet you back up and we'll do number 14 together. So one single crochet into each. So round number 14 it says to put in three single crochets in a row. So let's start that. So one, two, and three and then it says to put in um, de uh, decrease times two. So we're gonna do the next one and two together for one and then we'll do it again. So you can see it's really getting narrow at this point. Okay and then it says to finish off with three single crochets and there will be three single crochets left before you get to the stitch marker so we know that we're right. So one, two, and three and here's the stitch marker once again. So move up that stitch marker and let's carry on to round number 15. Round number 15 here we go. It's just one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So round 15 one single crochet into each. Please do that. We'll see you back in just a moment. Okay round number 16 we're gonna start doing an increase. So it says to single crochet into the first one And then it says to do an increase. So increase means that the next one will have two into the same one. So we're gonna get slightly bigger. And then it says to do five single crochets and then an increase. So one, two, three, four, and five. And the final one where the stitch marker is currently is going to have an increase. So it will be two into that last one. Okay, so that was round number 16. Okay, round 17 and 18 are both exactly the same. It's just one single crochet into each. So after you do the first round, just do the next one again. Just move up your stitch marker so you can keep count. So 17 and 18 are one single crochet each. And then what after this we're going to start closing it off very soon. So we're gonna have to put some stuffing inside this little part of the component so that we don't uh, have to worry about that at a later time. So 17 and 18, one single crochet each. Okay, round number 19 is going to be closing off this section. So I just wanna grab a little bit more stuffing. That's a little bit of a tighter hole this time and just kinda stuff it in there because the next uh, 19 is that we're gonna be closing this off. So now is the time to put that in before you do so. Okay, so let's move up and do the next one. So this is the final round of this component. And so basically we're going to decrease five times. So the next two are together one and I'm not really counting it. Every one of these are gonna get a decrease. So you just continue to go around all the way until the end of the stitch marker. And then you're going to leave a generous tail on the end because you're gonna use that afterward to kind of uh, finish off your project. <laughs> I almost said what it was. So here we go and so then that's my last one. There's my stitch marker. So I'm just using my scissors and just gonna grab and cut a generous length. So I can use that at a later time and I'm just gonna pull it through and hold. And I'm going to uh, just remove my stitch marker. If you wanna reuse it you can, it's up to you. But uh, if it doesn't wanna come out like it's not right now, I might so just have to cut it out just kinda nicely on my own. So if you get it stuck in like that, no big deal and we'll fix that at a later time. So that is that component for part number two. So we're now about to start number part three. So let's do part three together. We're gonna start off with a magic ring and I've already shown you how to do that already in this tutorial. So we're just gonna do that 
and get it started. So we're gonna only need one of this component and get your magic ring ready and it says to work six single crochets into the magic ring. So let's begin. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's like so. Once you have your six just uh, pull your straggler nice and tight. Get your stitch marker up and I'm gonna get another one. I love stitch markers of old yarn. I don't feel like I'm wasting the yarn actually and I always lose stitch markers anyway. So I'm just gonna pull it through so I can keep my counts. This part is not a very big component so you won't need too much time for this one here. It's always the way I, when you don't need a big component it's always really easy. So let's move along to round number one. Round number one we're going to do one single crochet into each one of the single crochets that are all the way around. So we're not doing any increasing or decreasing we're just kind of maintaining what's already there. So just one single crochet into each and do exactly what you did with the stitch marker every time you get back to the end. So this two, three, four, five, and six is the final. I tend to always count the very first time I go around just to make sure. Once you have your six in there just move that stitch marker up and then we're ready to play even further. So let's continue to round number two. Round number two is increase times six so that means that each one of these are going to get two single or single crochets each. So it's one and two and next one I didn't get that one in as far as I would like to to go. So what I wanna do is I wanna kinda just manipulate this a little bit and get it to kinda fold the other way. It's always starting is always the more difficult part because everything is so tight but then once you get it beyond a couple rows it's actually really easy. And you kind of want it tight anyway because you just don't want the project falling apart afterward or being any loose so the stuffing is all visible. Okay, so we're just uh, doing an increase. So two single crochets into each one. All the way back to the stitch marker which is the next one. And then just insert and pull up that stitch marker up so that you can keep count. Okay, that concludes round number two. Okay, three and four, very simple. Just one single crochet into each one of the stitches going around. Just mark it with a stitch marker when you go around the first time and do this for rounds three and four. Moving up to round number five. Round number five, it says single crochet. So the first one, single crochet, and then the next one is an increase. So there'll be two in the next one. And you want to continue to repeat that same patterning all the way around. So the next one's by itself and then the one after that is two. There's an increase. Okay, the next one's one by itself and the next one is an increase. So there's two. So there's one by itself, an increase, one by itself, an increase and one by itself and then the last one is an increase. So I know that I my stitch counts are still right when that happens. So let's get our stitch marker to move up and that concludes off that round. So that was round number five. Okay rounds six and seven are very simple. Just one single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So complete this for rounds five, sorry six and seven six and seven, one single crochet into each. So here's round number eight. It is the final round. We do want an extra long tail at the end. We don't need any stuffing at this point and it's simply just two single crochets, okay, in a row. So just one and one and then the next one is an increase. So there will be two in that one. And we continue that same patterning going all the way around. So the next two are by themselves. and then the next one is two into the same one. So by themselves for two 
and then the next one has two in that one. And you're repeating that all the way back to the stitch marker. This one has two. So one and two. This one has two. This is the increase. And then the next one's one by itself, two by itself. And then the last one is in the stitch marker and that one has an increase. So there's two in that one. So my stitch counts are right. Leave an extra long tail because you're gonna play with that later at some point in the tutorial. And this will be sewing on somewhere within your project. And so there you go. What do you think it is so far? Hmm. What do you think? So there we go. So let's move on to part number four. Okay, we're gonna start part number five. Part number five does not start with an actual um, magic ring. We're gonna do just regular chain work and we're going to create um, a chain of five. So it should, we have one, two, three, four, and five. And let's go in the instructions and see what we need to do next. Okay, so we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So one and two and we're going to do half double crochet. Second chain from the hook. So there's one half double crochet right there and it says to uh, go half double crochet into the next one. So just wrap the hook first, half double crochet into the next chain and then it says to put a uh, single crochet um, into the next and then it says to do three single crochets into the last chain and that's, this is the last one so I know I'm doing it right. So we're going to be three single crochets there. So one, two, and three. And now we're just gonna just turn the project so it just continues to go around. So the, the chain is right here. So I've just been going along. So just turn it around like so. And I want to continue down the other side as it says. And we're going to do a single crochet into the next one. Okay. Get the straggler out of the way. So just kind of trap it in a position so you can deal with it later. So one single crochet. We are going to do um, a half double crochet into the next and a half double crochet into the next like so. Okay, so now we just have to just weave this off. So just uh, leave a long string and you wanna do two of these. So make sure you do two of these. Okay, so just pull it through like this and do another one right now and so you don't forget how to do it and then I'll see you back and we'll do number part number five. So let's begin to do part number five. We're gonna reduce our crochet hook for this particular part. We need to do two of these. Okay, three and a half is your size, a size E if you are in the estates and you prefer that a unit of measure. We are not going to start off with the um, magic ring this time. We're going to start off with some chain work. Okay, so let's begin. It says we are going to chain two. So one and two and then we have to do as per the instructions work a six single crochet second chain from the hook. So right in the first one and we need to do six single crochets. So we have one and two, oops, and two, three, four, five and six. Now you'll need your uh, stitch marker once again. So let's just get that stitch marker ready for us. Just I'm just using some spare yarn on the side here and it's a nice utilization of yarn. And I wanna pull it through the final one that I did just so I can do it. Okay, so I can keep count as I go. And we've been doing that all along at this point in this tutorial today. So let's uh, begin to do the next round. Rounds two, three, and four are the same thing. So we just have to do one single crochet. So just reach on over and grab that first one and do one single crochet into each one of the stitches all the way around. Every time you pass the stitch marker, make sure that you check it off on your list as being complete. So please do this for rounds number two, three, and four. And I'll see you back and we'll start the next rounds after that. So let's begin round number five. Round number five is pretty simple. We're going to do an increase. So the first two are going to be by themselves. So one and two and then there's going to be the next one is an increase so that there's two single crochets into that one. So we're gonna get slightly bigger. 
on whatever it is that we're doing. Just like so. Okay, so then the next two are going to be by themselves. So one and the next one is by itself two. And the next one is the, the final stitch. So it, there's going to be two in that one. So one and two. Move up your stitch marker. That concludes number five. Carrying along number six, seven, and eight are just one single crochet each in each. So please do that. So six, seven, and eight, one single crochet into each one of these going all the way around. Okay, so we're now getting one more row done and then we're actually done. So we just have to do one more but we need to stuff this a little bit with um, stuffing. Just do it ever so lightly. There's this is not a big component but we just wanna kinda give it a bit of a, a boost with some stuffing so it looks like it's three dimensional. I think my stitch marker is getting in the way so I'm just gonna kinda pull that out. I only have one more round to go anyway so I don't have to be too concerned about it. So I just wanna put a little bit of stuffing in there so it keeps its thickness but I don't wanna ha have it overstuffed either. So I'm just kinda manipulating stuff around. So let's do the final round together. And the final round we're gonna start closing it in. That's why we need to do the stuffing at this particular point. So the final round that we go, it says to, um, to do a decrease in every stitch. So basically every two are coming together. So we're just gonna start off with the first one. So the first two are coming together. The next two are coming together for a decrease. And you need to make sure that you do two of these components when you're doing it. I wonder what it could be. Hmm. Okay, so there is everything together. So what I want to do at this point is that I want to keep a generous tail because and I want to be able to use that then to secure it to my piece afterward. So I'm just gonna pull it through the loop just so I don't lose it and that becomes that piece there. So do two of those and I guess that concludes today's tutorial. This is part one of the f uh, four week program. This is actually so this, so this concludes the tutorial for today. We have parts one and through five uh, that we did today and just pay attention to what you need two of and then move on and we'll see you next week as we continue along with the mystery. I'm Agurumi. Until then, we'll see you. Bye bye. Welcome to week number two of the mystery Amigurumi. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to go through part number two of a four week series of doing a mystery amigurumi. What is this project at this time? I'm not telling and many people really do not know what they're up to and we're going through all the different components and at week number four you're gonna find out what this mystery is and then you'll be able to put it together. So this is a, a great deal of fun. I think it's kind of a neat that you don't really know what you're crocheting. Within today's tutorial we're gonna do parts six, seven, and eight. There's three different components. We're going to need two of the first one, one of the second, and then we're gonna need two of the next one on the other side. So today's tutorial is a really kind of a quick one. Uh, there's not too much work involved in this. Um, let's just quickly review the yarn and the hook and if you are just joining us for the very first time, we do have a week number one uh, program already out. So you can just go back and review that if you would like to follow along as well. So if you would like a copy of this uh, diagram and all of the instructions, please go to the more information link of this video and you can get access to that. There's a downloadable PDF that you can use on your mobile device. You can also print it if you wish to check off the boxes as you go within the pattern. So let's just quickly review the yarn. Within today's project I'm going to be using Karen Simply Baby and I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook and that's the size G if you wish. Now there was multiple different choices that you could use in order to do that and that was on episode number one. So this is what I'm using on camera and this makes for a really interesting look. Because you don't know what it is, um, it's kinda hard to determine what colors you need but you need to take a chance and see how it's gonna go from that point. This is part number six and we need to make two of these. What are they? Hmm, bowling pins? 
Hmm. Are they a tail? Are they a leg? Are they a neck and a body? Hmm. What is it? So today's tutorial we're going to reveal what this, well we're not. So this is part number six. We're gonna need two of these. What is it? Is it a body with a long neck? Is it a body with a head? Is it a tail? Yeah, I don't know what it is. And but it's going to be a lot of fun and we need two of these. So we, you, for this particular project you're going to need a stitch marker. You can kind of see that I carry my stitch markers all the way through and I kind of leave it to the very end and then I pull it out at the end just like so. So you're going to need a stitch marker and you're going to need your yarn and let's start going through the instructions now. Okay, round number one, part six. So part six, we need to make a magic ring. If you don't like to make magic rings, just substitute with however you would prefer to do it. So you just wrap it over your hand twice and I showed how to do this more slowly in episode number one. So by this time, you probably should be more uh, comfortable with it. So let's begin. We are going to do eight single crochets into the magic ring. So just going into the center of the ring and crochet, single crochet eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And before you go any further, put in that stitch marker just like we did on the first week number one. Put in that stitch marker, just leave it hanging inside there and then therefore you'll know which hook or you'll know which stitch is your stop and start put your crochet hook back into that last stitch and I want you now just to grab the, the tail of the magic ring and just pull everything nice and tight. And we're gonna work in a continuous round and this stitch marker will allow you to be able to count. So that's round number one. Okay, round number two it says to increase times eight. Increase if you remember from part number one is that each stitch is going to get, uh, is gonna get two single crochets. So when it says increase it means that's two single crochets. So each one of these going all the way back around to the stitch marker will be two single crochets in each. We're starting at the very bottom at the, at the ball shape of the, the shape that we're doing. So we're getting this part to be bigger right off the bat in order to form that. So two single crochets into each. Okay. And you go all the way to the last stitch marker one and you put two into that one. One and two. And remember on the very finals that we're doing this we wanna move that stitch marker up. So just pull it through. So just grab that stitch marker, pull it through underneath that stitch and that'll mark it so that you know what is the last one for next time you're coming around on this. So let's move up to round number three. Round number three says single crochet increase times eight. So the first one is going to be a single crochet and then the next one is gonna be two single crochets and that's your increase. Okay, so the repeat pattern on this whole one is that you're go one is gonna be one single crochet by itself, the next one will be two single crochets. Okay, so the next one is one and two. Continue to do that same thing going all the way around and then move up your stitch marker to get ready for round number four. I'm just finishing up round number three so I'm just continuing my same pattern and because of the way I started the final one will always have two single crochets into the same one so that it'll end with an increase stitch and then we just grab the stitch marker and move it up. Let's move along to round number four. Round number four is super easy. One single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So one single crochet into each. I'll meet you back up at the end. Please move up your stitch marker. We'll get ready for number five together. Let's begin round number five. Round number si five says two single crochets and then an increase and then you repeat that eight times. So the first two are going to be one single crochet into each and then the next one is an increase so there'll be two into the next. So that is the repeat pattern so that it's one single crochet, one single crochet and then the next one will have two single crochets. Please do that same patterning going all the way around. Move up your stitch marker and we'll then do rows, uh, rounds number six through ten. Okay, let's start round number six through ten and so there's a total of five rounds here. So rows number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One single crochet into each. Move up your stitch marker each and every time so you don't lose count and please do rows from six 
to 10 now and I'll meet you back up and we'll start row number 11 together. Okay rounds number 6 through 10 are now done. Let's start on round number 11. So it says two single crochets and then a decrease. So the first ones will be two single, one single crochet in the next two. Okay, so one and two and then it's gonna be a decrease. So you go in, pull through, go into the next one, pull through. So you have three loops on your hook, pull through all, all three. Okay, so that was a decrease. So the repeat pattern is that there's gonna be two single crochets in a row and then there will be a decrease. So one and two and then pull through both. Please do that same patterning going all the way around for round number 11. And move up your stitch marker and let's get on to number 12 after that. Let's go on to round number 12. Round number 12 is one single crochet into each all the way around. So just one single crochet into each stitch. Move up your stitch marker and get ready for round number 13. Okay round number 13 is very simple. One single crochet into the first one and then it's a decrease in the next one. So one and one okay and pull through together. So the repeat pattern is one single crochet by itself. Decrease is the next one. Please do that same patterning going all the way around. So one single crochet and the next one is a decrease. Do that all the way around. Okay, let's review 14 and 15 both the same. One single crochet into each all the way around. So once you get 14 done just move up your stitch marker. Do round number 15 as well. So 14 and 15 are one single crochet into each all the way around. Okay rounds 14 and 15 are actually done and I want to put some light stuffing into this section here. So it's gonna be easier to do it now than it is to wait until the tube is bigger. So what I want you to just do is grab some stuffing and stuff it relatively lightly but you want it kind of firm too. But if you start seeing your stuffing through um, the stitch work then you know it's way too much. You can always remove stuffing at the end of it uh, by sticking your hook through random spots in order to pull out some more stuffing but it's harder to add it in if you don't have enough without having to rip apart your project. So just stuff your, it's like a ball shape at this time. Just give it a bit of a fluff. Okay and that's all I'm gonna put in for now. I'm kind of feeling the difference. I think there's more in this one here. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. So let's move on and we're gonna go for rounds number 16 next. Round number 16 it says to put two single crochets in a row and then a decrease. Okay so the first two are gonna be one single crochet in each and the next one is going to be a decrease. So we're getting even smaller. Okay that's why it's better to put the stuffing in before you started this. So it's two single crochets in a row and then a decrease. And if you look at the other shape that we're doing. This is a decrease one here. If you look at the other shape here you'll notice that it's kind of more narrower in this spot right here and so that's what we're kind of doing at this particular point. So please do that same patterning going all the way around for number 16. Okay round 17 and 18 are both the same. Just one single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So do this for rounds number 16 or sorry 17 and 18 and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Now we're ready for round number 19 and 19 we're gonna start increasing and getting a little bit bigger. So we're going to do the first one as an increase and the next one is, sorry the first one is a single crochet and then the next one is an increase. So just single crochet and then increase. So the repeat pattern is single crochet and increase. Please do that all the way around. Now we're ready for rounds number 20 all the way to 23. That's four rounds and it's just one single crochet into each going all the way around and just mark it up and then after that we have round 24 which is just simply uh, finishing off. Um, oh sorry it's not. We still have a little bit more to go after that. So rounds number 20 to 23, four rounds of single crochet and I'll meet you back for round number 24. Okay before we go on to row number 24 I want you to stuff what you already have here. Now we've already got the kind of the main ball stuffed. Again just kind of lightly stuff it. Putting more in. Okay I'm happy with that. Put our hook and let's begin round number 24. So round 24 it says in, uh, eight single crochets increase times two. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go around and single crochet eight times in a row. So one, two, three, four 
five, six, seven, and eight, and then it's an increase. So this one has two single crochets into it, and then do it again. So let's count eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And look where the stitch marker is. It's the next one, and this is the last one, which is your increase. So that completes off round number 24. Move up your stitch marker and let's begin and we're gonna go rows 25 all the way to 30 which is a total of six rounds and we're gonna start that in just a second. I just gotta fix this. Okay rounds 25 to 30 all we just need to do is one single crochet in each. It's a total of six uh, revolutions. Please check it off on the box and then just continue to go every time you do a round just check it off in the box. So rounds number 25 all the way to 30 one single crochet into each. Let's begin round number 31. 31 has two single crochets and then a decrease. So then round number 31. So the first two are single crochets and then a decrease for the next one. Please do that same patterning of going all the way around. So two single crochets in a row and then a decrease and have your stuffing available because we're gonna be coming to a conclusion on this part soon. Okay before we begin round number 32 I want you to stuff again on what's already kinda just fill it up right to the top. So please do that before we start round number 32. Okay round number 32 we are going to start off by doing one single crochet into the first one and then the, in the next one it will be a decrease. So that's your repeat patterning going all the way around. So this one's a decrease. So the next one is a single crochet. Oops, I dropped the ply there. Try it again, single crochet. And then the next one is a decrease. So please do that same patterning going all the way around for round number 32. Okay the final round is number 33 and it's a decrease times five. So the next uh, it's just gonna be keep decreasing all the way around. So just put two together. Okay, so every other one, every one is being a decrease. And then what we're going to do is then you're gonna fasten off leaving an extra long tail on your project and we're gonna use that tail later. And, and please do this all the way around. So it's a decrease. And all the final touches and the end can be done at that time. Okay, so I've gone all the way back around. I can see the stitch marker. So I'm just going to just trim my yarn. Maybe about two feet long. I don't know if I need that much but I'm going to anyway and just pull it through. And then that concludes that, that one off here. So what now I have two of these and so you'll have to do a second one. And uh, what are these? Hmm. I don't know. So you have to move on. Let's go on to uh, part number seven of the mystery crochet along. Okay let's move along to part number seven. Part number seven is just only one that we need and it looks like this and there's only 12 rounds. So this this one's gonna go really um, quite slowly. I'm not even sure that we actually even need to do any kind of stuffing for this but we'll have to determine that as we go. This might just be a generic note. So let's begin part number seven. So we're going to work with a three and a half millimeter uh, crochet hook a size E. So I've gone down a size in order to do this but I'm using the same amount of yarn so I want this to be nice and tight. Let's uh, begin to do this. So we're going to start with our yarn and I'm using the same yarn and it says to do a magic ring and we've already shown that in one of the, in the starting. And again if you don't like magic rings you can always improvise at this stage. It's all about what you're comfortable with. So once we have our magic ring and it says five single crochets into the magic ring. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm coming up near the, the end of the ball. That's why you see this. Okay, so we have five in there. I want to grab a stitch marker. So I'm just gonna cut another spare yarn off camera. I don't need a really big long one. I probably cut it way too big. Insert underneath the last stitch. Pull through. So that will show me where that is. Now let's grab the tail of the magic ring and pull everything nice and tight. And let's move on to round number two. Round number two through eight. 
two, three, eight, there's going to be one single crochet into each one all the way around. So I want you to do rounds two through, two through, <laughs> two through eight and two all the way to eight for one single crochet. Move up your stitch marker as you get along and as you go completely around. So two through eight and check that off and we'll meet you on round number nine. Okay, two through eight are now done. This is what it looks like and now we're going to go for round number nine. Nine is two single crochets in a row and then it'll be an increase. Okay, so two, um, so two single crochets in a row and then the next one will be an increase. I know everything's really tight on this particular pro uh, concept here. So this one's an increase so there'll be two and then it finishes off with two single crochets in a row and that'll take you back to the stitch marker for round number nine. So there's my stitch marker here with the blue. I like these stitch marker concepts. You know it's spare yarn and you never have to worry about losing them and they're easy to carry up through. So that was round number nine. Let's go for n rounds ten through uh, twelve next. Now rounds number ten through twelve are just one single crochet in each. If I could give some unsolicited advice, it says to stuff lightly. I wouldn't even bother. This like this is so um, you're really not gonna get much stuffing in there and for what I know it's for I wouldn't even bother. So um, tens, uh, 10, 11 and 12 is just one single crochet into each and then we're gonna fasten off and then call that part and we only need one of these for this project for today. So I just finished round number 12 and all I'm just going to do at this point is just uh, trim my yarn. I actually off camera I actually have just that much left of my ball. So I'm just going to just wrap the hook and pull it through the final loop like so and what I'm going to do at this point is that I'm going to um, save this and hold this to the side. So let me just finish this properly. So I'm just gonna pull this through and I'm just gonna hold this to the side because I'm going to use it down in the future and I'm not sure why I'm having so much difficulty. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm just gonna keep this to the side. I want the, the extra long tail because I'm gonna need that. You can pull out your stitch marker if you wish as well and this will then be part number seven. So what is this? Hmm. And now it's time for part number eight and this is the final part and you're going to need two of these pieces here. I have one already completely done like so and we're gonna need two of those. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna move back to a four millimeter. So the larger size crochet hook again and we'll grab the same yarn and then uh, there's only two rows so this goes really quickly. Let's begin now. Let's begin our first one and we're going to start off with a slip knot. So we're gonna do some chain work this time. So we're going to chain 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So for row number one we're going to start off and we're gonna be on this side of the chain where this finger is we're gonna come down this and we're gonna rotate around the end and come down the other side where my thumb is. Okay, so we're gonna wrap right completely around. So it says double crochet fourth chain from the hook. Let's count back. So one, two, three and four in double crochet and I go on the back hump of the stitch. Just makes it a lot nicer finish. So one double crochet and then it says to do three half double crochets in a row for the next so three, so three half double crochets. So one and go into the next one for a half double crochet. Two and go in the next one for a half double crochet. And now it says three single crochets in a row. So one, two and three and you have one more stitch left and if you read the instructions it says three single crochets in the last chain which is Correct, that's it. This is my last chain. So one, two. See I'm just naturally rotating this because I know it's coming around the corner and three. So just turn it upside down. Okay, so we were on this side here. Just turn it upside down and come down the other side. So it said that's why it says rotate piece of the work to the opposite side. So we're just rotating and it says to do three single crochets in a row. So this coming back on the other side of the chain and you're gonna do three single crochets. So one, two and three. Now the next three are half double crochets. So wrap that hook first and go into half double crochet in the next three. And then it says two double crochets into the last chain. So one and two. 
and that completes off round number one. Okay, or row number one. We want to turn this around now. So we're gonna turn it as like it's an afghan or et cetera. We're just gonna turn it and it says chain one and it says BLO uh, nine single crochets. BLO means back loop only. Okay, so below means <laughs> back loop only. So we're just coming into the stitch and remember with your uh, crochet there's always two strands. So the first strand is the front loop and the next strand away farthest away from you is the back loop. So coming onto the first stitch in back loop only and it says back loop only nine. So one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Okay and now you should be in the tip of whatever we are and it says three single crochets into the next. Okay so it's still in the back loop only. So one, two, whoops, two and three and now it says, so we're just turning it around, just following it around and it says to do nine single crochets in a row and it's on the back loop only. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and you're on the last one for nine. So what you wanna just do then is just fasten this off now and you wanna keep an extra long strand. Okay, so you need two of these, these things. Okay, and just kinda wrap it around and just leave it in your little box and this will conclude uh, part two or week number two of the mystery um, crochet along and we'll see you again next week as we carry on and uh, these, this one wasn't so bad today. So let's uh, continue, uh, be sure to show us your work in progress, your WIPs, your whips and chains also on Facebook. We'd love to see your creativity and see what you have so far and remember you can do more than one mystery because we'll be collecting your photos at the end when everybody's got theirs complete. So until then, we'll see you and have a fabulous day. This is week three of the Mystery Amigurumi. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial we are going to be making this component. We only need one of these and this is exactly what it's gonna look like at this point. So we want to make sure that when we stuff it that it doesn't wanna fall over. Okay, so this is a kind of a neat uh, idea and this is part of the components that you're gonna need. So this is week number three. This is what we're going to make and this consists of 47 rounds and we go through this step by step. So let's get started. Hi, I'm your host Mikey. Today is week number three of the Mystery Amigurumi and we are going to be making only one component today. It's a big one so this is all that we're gonna be doing for this week and basically you just have to grab a four millimeter size G crochet hook. So we've been using two different sizes. This is the larger size and of course you're gonna have to have your yarn that you've been playing with all throughout the mystery. Within today's project we are just gonna review. Remember that if you're new to the crochet along for this one, each one of these boxes represents when you when you check off. So it says round six to 12. Basically it's the, these are the boxes that represent six to 12. So when you get six done you do the first box, seven, next box, eight, next box. So basically this one is a really easy one. So let's continue and it looks kind of very much like a chess piece at, the, at this point. For today's project you are going to need a stitch marker about almost a foot and a half long and I use that in order to mark my rounds when I'm going all the way around. Four millimeter size G crochet hook today and your yarn and you're also gonna need your stuffing because we'll be stuffing as we go as well. So let's create a slip knot to begin. So let's create a magic ring. So we've already covered this in the first two tutorials but let's review one more time. So the, the strand is in front of my hand and I go up and over the two and I make it cross over on the top side. So I go up under the first string, pull through and then I just go through the next string and pull through like so. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna go for round or round number one. 
Okay, round number one, we are going to go six single crochets into the, into the main ring. It says MR, that means main ring. So just going in and let's count out six. So single crochet right into the ring. So one and two and three, four, and five, and six. So now that we have our six done, before you can carry on, just pull up and I want you to insert your hook underneath the first uh, stitch that, or the last stitch you just did. Grab your stitch marker and pull a section through, just a little piece of it through and that will represent your stopping and starting and we're gonna do that each and every time we go up and if you've been following the other tutorials, you know that's true. So now I want you to grab the straggler at this point and pull it tight like so and just let it fall out of the way and now we're ready for round number two. So round number two we're going to do an increase times six and increase is always two single crochets into the same crochet. So we're just gonna start with the first one. So we're not chaining up one, we're just gonna go in a conti continuous revolution. Go into the very first one which is the next one in a row and put in two double crochet or two single crochets. One and two and do that six times. So do the next one, one and two. Do the next one, one and two. Okay, next one, one and two. Okay, next one, one and two. And then the final one, where the stitch marker is, you're gonna do one and two in there as well. So on the second one that is, which is the last one you'll do before going back to the instructions, you will pass, um, you'll just go underneath the first one and pull that stitch marker through like so. Okay, so we keep doing that each and every time. Let's move up to round number three. Round number three says to do a single crochet and then an increase, single crochet and increase. So the first one will be one single crochet by itself and I've been working with really thick yarn lily so these smaller hooks are kind of, um, you see me struggle a little bit on camera that's because I'm not used to the smaller hooks. <laughs> so the first one is one single crochet and then the next one is an increase so there will be two in that one. Okay so the repeat patterning going all the way around is one single crochet in the first one and then the next one is two single crochets. Com continue to do that and then move up that stitch marker and then we'll carry on with round number four. Okay, stitch marker is moved up, ready for round number four. It says to do two single crochets and then an increase and repeat that. So the first two will be one single crochet in, into each and then the next one is an increase. So there'll be two into that one. So one and two. So here's the repeat pattern is that there's gonna be two single crochets sitting by themselves and then the next one is an increase. So there'll be two in that one. Continue that same pattern going all the way around. When we come back move up your stitch marker and then we'll car carry on with round number five. Okay round number five says three single crochets and then an increase. So then that means that the first one is one and the next one two and the next one is three. So there's your three in a row and then the next one is an increase. One and two. So the repeat patterning for this one is three are by themselves. So one two and three and then the next one is an increase. So there will be two into that one. So continue to do that all the way around. Okay round number five is complete. Stitch marker is moved up. Now we're gonna continue from rows all the way from rounds all the way from six to twelve and that's a total of seven rounds. So we're just going to do one single crochet into each and then move up your stitch marker and then check it off on the list when you get the round done and you wanna do this for seven rounds complete and then we're gonna carry on and when we come back then I will start you on round number thirteen after that and um, it's gonna be quite cool. So please do this. So one single crochet in each of the next seven rounds which are rounds number six all the way through twelve. We'll see you back here in just a moment. So I just finished up rounds number six through twelve. This is what it looks like. It's a bowling shape and I'm working on the outside and uh, well I'm working on the outside of the bowl I guess you can say. So what we have is round number thirteen is three single crochets and then a decrease. So the first three are going to be one single crochet each 
and then a decrease and if you remember how to do a decrease it's going into the first one pull through and hold going into the next one pull through and two and hold you'll have three on your hook pull through all three and that makes two into one. So let's repeat this again. So three single crochets in a row and then the next two are together so they're a decrease. Please do that same patterning going all the way around for round number 13 and then we'll meet you back up and we'll do number 14 together. Round number 14 is nice and easy. Simply just start and just one single crochet into each going all the way around. So round number 14. Okay, round number 15 this time. 15 is two single crochets in a row and then a decrease. So two in a row and then the next two are together. That's the repeat pattern for this round. So the, again, it's two in a row. So two single crochets in a row and then the decrease is in the next. Continue that same patterning going all the way around and this will be round number 15. Okay, round 16 to 20 are all the same. That's a total of five rounds and there's gonna just be one single crochet into each. So every time you pass the stitch marker, check it off as one of your rounds but it's one single crochet into each for rounds number all the way 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So please do that now and I'll meet you back up on number 21. So we're now here from round number 21. So this is what it looks like so far. So number 21 we're gonna start increasing once again. So it's two single crochets in a row and then an increase for round number 21. So one and two and then two together. Two into the same one for an increase. So the repeat pattern for number 21 is two single crochets in a row followed by the next one being an increase. So there'll be two in the next one. Please do that all the way around. Okay, so now it's time for rounds number 22, 23 and 24. Three rounds in a row and it's just one single crochet into each. So one single crochet into rounds number 22, 23 and 24. Please do that now. I'll meet you back up on 25. So we're now ready for number 25 and 25 is very simple. It is three single crochets in a row and then an increase. So the first three are by themselves one two and three and then an increase once again. So there will be two in this one. Okay, so let's repeat it one more time. So one, two and three and then the next one is an increase. Continue that same patterning going all the way around. It's now time for rounds number 26, 27 and 28. It's just one single crochet into each going all the way around. So please do that for three rounds for 26, 27 and 28. Okay, 26, 27 and 28 are now done. That's what it looks like so far. So now we have round number 29 and it says four single crochets and then an increase. So let's go for four. So one, two, three and four and then an increase. So continue that same patterning going all the way around four in a row and then one increase and continue to do that all the way around. Time for round number 30 and it's just one single crochet into each going all the way around. That's round number 30. Round number 31 okay is five single crochets and then an increase. So one, two, three, four, five and then it's an increase. So continue that same pattern and going all the way around. Five single crochets in a row followed by one increase. Round number 32 is very very simple. It's just one single crochet into each going all the way around. So one single crochet into each. Round number 33 we're gonna do something even more drastic this time. We are going to go three single crochets in a row and then an increase. So we have been following this. I'm just gonna do this. So three single crochets and then an increase and that's the repeat. So up until now we've been just increasing like we've been getting uh, four single crochets and an increase then five and etc. By doing three single crochets and an increase it's gonna start making it really bell out and that's kind of what you're seeing going on in the pattern as well. So uh, for 33 it's three single crochets and then one increase. Rounds number 34 and 35 we are going to do one single crochet into each going all the way around. So please do that for 34, 35, one single crochet into each. Okay 34 and 35 are now done. This is what it looks like so far. I don't have any stuffing in it yet. Um, I don't need to put it in there yet. So uh, let's go for 36. 36 we're still gonna increase and get bigger. So this time it is four single crochets in a row followed by an increase for this particular round. So one, two, three and four and then the next one is an increase. So continue that same pattern and going all the way around for uh, single crochets and then an increase. 
It's time for number 37 and 38 and they're just one single crochet into each going all the way around. So please do that for 37 and 38. Okay, round number 39. Here we go. So we've done 37 and 38. So if you look at the instructions, it says five single crochets and then an increase and that's times 10 and there'll be two uh, single crochets left over at the very end that you're just gonna do one single crochet into each. So this one uh, for round number 39 is five in a row. One, two, three, four and five. Okay, and then it's an increase. So you wanna continue that same patterning going all the way around. You will end up with two that are not done at the end by the time you get the stitch marker and those two are just one single crochet into each. We're now about to do 40, 41. They're just one single crochet into each. We're almost getting to the end of this particular project so it's gonna be really kinda neat and uh, you're gonna need your stuffing soon but for 40 and 41 just one single crochet into each. Round 42 we're gonna start doing a decrease. So this time we're going to do four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three and four and then we're going to then put the next two together for a decrease. So please continue that same pattern and going all the way around four single crochets and then a decrease in the next two. So let's go on for round number 43. We're gonna do a decrease again. It's the next three are gonna be by themselves. So one, two, and three and then the decrease after that and continue that all the way around. We're gonna start stuffing right after this round. So one, two and three and decrease. So please do that same pattern and going all the way around. Okay, 43 is now complete and I want to now stuff it. I wanna essentially get my hands in here. The more I go in, in this project, the harder it's gonna get, get my hands in there. So I wanna stuff it almost to the top of this and then we're gonna continue to stuff as we go. So stuff what you have so far. So here's what it looks like so far. I have it stuffed. If it cannot stand up like this, um, when you have it stuffed it means that it's too weak. So if it's falling over it means that it's too, it's not enough stuffing. So we can always take out stuffing if you, if it's too weak when it's going to stand up and hold. Um, but if there's not enough in there and you close it off and then it's limp then you're in big trouble. So I'm just continue to stuff. I'm gonna stop right here. I can see it looks like a, a really kind of a cool <laughs> I'm not even sure what it looks like. It reminds me of something from a fairy tale. But anyway, so we're going to um, go on to round number 44 next. We only have four more rows to go and it's gonna come in completely flat along the top here. Okay, so what we want to do here is at this point is that this one is gonna be a decrease again. I'm just realigning my hook in. So it's gonna be a decrease as we go. So it's gonna be two single crochets in a row followed by a decrease next. So two in a row and then a decrease. So continue that same patterning going all the way around. So two single crochets and then a decrease. Okay, 44 is complete now for 45. This time is going to be one single crochet and then a decrease. So one, so this is a decrease. I've already done the single. So one single crochet and a decrease. Please do that and I'm gonna restuff a little bit more late, uh, right in this area here. It's a little bit too weak for me. So I'm gonna restuff again after this round. Okay, just two more rounds left. This round here is a single crochet and then a decrease. So again, exactly what we just did in the last one. So just one single crochet and then a decrease. So the next two are together. So it's gonna really pull in tight now. Okay, so continue to do that. Single crochet and then a decrease. Okay, this is the final round. We still have this much of a space left and basically the last round is a decrease times eight. So basically we just start on the next one. So we just do decreases all the way around. So basically two are coming together and then what you want to do then after that we wanna leave a long tail and then we're gonna pull the remaining um, section closed. So a single crochet, or sorry, a decrease in each going all the way around. So 47 is complete so I wanna leave an extra long string just like so and I wanna pull it. So you can see that there's extra spaces within the stitches. Um, I can pull out some stuffing after if I really want to but I wanna make sure it's not understuffed. That's my biggest goal. So what I want to do at this point is that I wanna take this long string and put it onto a darning needle and I wanna feed it through all of the stitches that are left. Okay, so I'm just gonna start and I'm just gonna move myself around. So just go into each. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna close line it. 
So we're just gonna pull on the string and it will pull everything nice and tight. I've done uh, something in the past where I never stuffed it enough and then um, especially when it was a neck of a creature and it's like and the neck completely fell over but then everything was closed and I had sewn everything back up and it's like oh no. So I'm coming all the way back to the start. So once I get back to the start just don't mind the, the stitch marker just pull everything nice and closed. These stitches what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of just massage it a little bit but I want to sew in this section right here. So it's permanently shut at the bottom at the at the top here. Okay and that, that would be how you do this section. So this concludes today's mystery. This is mystery week number three and you just need one of these. So thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next week and we're gonna get the final components done and you can uh, then see exactly what you have to do. So next week we are going to be um, you're gonna see exactly what you've been working on and putting it together and you may be able to get it out for a gift in the same day as well. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. We'll see you. Welcome to week number four, the final week of the Mystery Amigurumi. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is week number four, the Mystery Amigurumi. Yes, we've seen some correct guesses on Facebook already, but of course I'm not gonna deny or confirm any of those allegations of what it could have been and today by the end of today you'll figure out exactly what it is because we'll have another video on the assembly of putting together your character. So today we have uh, four different components. Uh, one of them has uh, two components uh, two side by side and so basically we're gonna go through parts 10, 11, 12 and I believe it's 13. Yes all the way to the end and then we'll be able to figure out exactly what we're doing. So without further ado you're going to need your yarn that you've been using. For the first one we're going to be using a three and a half millimeter um, crochet hook. Uh, three and a half for that one as well. Let's just see the other ones. Three and a half and four millimeter. So you'll need two sizes today. You'll need some stitch markers to so carry on through and without further ado let's get started. So let's review part number 10. It looks like a bowling pin. That's exactly what we're doing here and we only need one of these. So let's grab our stitch marker three and a half millimeter size E crochet hook today and let's get started with round number one. So let's begin round number one and we're going to do um, a magic circle. So MR as per the instructions is a magic circle. So do it. We just put the yarn in front. We've done this in the other tutorials for this. So this is week number four. So please do your magic ring. So if you've been following along you probably have gotten used to doing it just like that. So let's uh, begin round number one. It says two uh, six single crochets into the MR which is magic ring. So just coming in and let's count out six single crochets. So one and two, three, four, five and six. Once you have this done just uh, just pull up a loop. There is my stitch marker in the background here. I'm just gonna put it in underneath the first one. Okay we've been doing that all along in the mystery as well. So we're just gonna carry our stitch marker through so that we don't ever lose count on where we are. So there we go. Put that hook back in and then just grab that loose strand. Okay this one here and pull tight and that'll pull everything into a circle. So let's move on to round number two. So round number two it says increase times six. Increase if you've been remembering all along is two single crochets into the same one. So we immediately just come to the first single crochet and we do are doing this in a continuous round. So if you're just joining us for the first time now then this is a continuous round project the whole thing. Okay so let me just retry that one again. So the first one and we wanna do two single crochets into each stitch going all the way back around to the stitch marker which is marked with the blue strand. kind of early in the morning here at the crochet crowd at this time. So I'm not as <laughs> nimble as I should be. Okay so here we go. Now I'm getting into the swing. 
So it's two single crochets into each one of those going all the way to the stitch marker. Uh, once we just get a little bit further into today's tutorial I'm just gonna give you the instructions to start the round but I'm not gonna have you follow me completely uh, going around each and every round because it's just you'll get bored watching me go. So here we go. So this is the stitch marker. So you're gonna put two in there and then once you get the line finished or the round finished just pull up and pull that stitch marker through. Okay and it will move it up and so then next time you're done you'll know the stitch marker is the last. So let's uh, move up to round number three. Round number three again really easy. It says two single crochets. Okay so we're gonna go two single crochet or one single crochet in the next two. So that means that's what it means two single crochets and then it says to do an increase. So the increase then is then two into the same one. Okay so but why so what it means two single crochets is that there's gonna be one single crochet and then two and the next one is an increase. So there'll be two into that one. So do that same patterning going all the way around. So just finished round number three. Remember to move up that stitch marker so you never lose count. So rounds four or five and six the next three rounds are just one single crochet into each single crochet going all the way around. So four, five and six. Please do all three rounds. Just continue to mark off every time you go around so you can mark it off the list. Those empty boxes are check boxes that you can fill in and please do four, five and six now. And I'll see you. We'll start number seven. Let's begin round number seven. Round number seven is two single crochets in a row. So one, sorry it's one single crochet with two, <laughs> with two. Okay so it's one and two and then it says a decrease. So a decrease if you remember is in, pull through, go to the next stitch, in, pull through. Okay so you have three loops on your hook and pull through all three and that makes those two into one. So that's a decrease. So the repeat pattern on this whole uh, round is that there's gonna be uh, a single crochet two times in a row and then a decrease. So in, in and pull through. Do that same patterning going all the way around. Okay round number eight is starting off with one single crochet by itself and then a decrease. Okay so the next two are together. Okay so another single crochet by itself and the next one is a decrease so two together. So do that same patterning going all the way around for round number eight. Okay rounds number nine and ten are both the same. Just one single crochet into each and then after we come you get those two rounds done we're going to lightly stuff this section here and then continue to move on in this tutorial. So please just do one single crochet in each for rounds number nine and ten. So I just finished up rounds nine and ten and then I stuffed it. So I got some stuffing in there you can see it's all filled up. So let's move on to round number eleven and we're gonna start increasing once again. So let's move on and it says to single crochet into the next one and then increase into the one after that. So the increase if you remember is two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay so the, remember the repeat pattern is one single crochet by itself and the next one is an increase. So continue that same pattern going all the way around. Round number 12 we're going to just put one single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So one single crochet into each for round number 12. Round number 13 is what do we got here? Two single crochets in a row. So one and two and then uh, an increase. So that's two into the same one. So for this round it is one crochet by a single crochet by itself, two single crochets by itself and then an increase. So do that same all the way. Uh, same thing all the way around. Round number 14 here we go. So it's gonna be three single crochets in a row. So we got one, two and three and then an increase. So there will be two into this one. Okay so let's repeat that one more time just so you get it. So there's gonna be three by itself. So one, two and three and then an increase so it'll be two into that one. Please do that same thing all the way around. Time for rounds 15 and 16. Just a straight easy. It is one single crochet into each all the way around. So 15 and 16 one single crochet. Mark your sheets off and I'll meet you back on number 17. So round number 17 again another easy one. Ah they're all easy what am I saying? So four single crochets in a row and then an increase. So let's do this. So one and two three and four and then this is an increase. 
Okay, continue that same pattern in going all the way around. So one, two, <laughs> it's like aerobics, <laughs> three, four, and here's the increase. So do that same thing all the way around. <laughs> you can tell people you actually exercised today. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Now 18 to 27, there's a total of 10 rounds complete. It's just one single crochet into each. So every time you pass around the stitcher marker, move it up and check it off on your list. And uh, it's 18 to 27 as one single crochet into each. Please do that and then I'll meet you back here and we'll start number 28. We're almost done at that point too. Okay, 18 to 27 are now done and I wanna stuff this because we're gonna start doing a decrease in the next two rounds we are decreasing completely. So if you don't stuff it right now, you're gonna be in big trouble. So make sure you stuff it at this point and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So round number 28, I'm ready to, I've got myself stuffed up and let's go. So two single crochets in a row. So let's just pull this tighter. One and two. And then the next one is two together. So it's a, it's a decrease. That's the repeat pattern for this entire round. So let's uh, repeat that one more time. So just a single crochet and a single crochet and then a decrease. Continue that same idea all the way around. Okay, last round is number 29 and it's a decrease all the way around. So basically every, we're just gonna keep decreasing. So one, and two, so that's a decrease. Do it again. One and, and two is a decrease. I think I missed that one. Let me try that one again. So just pull through like so. So continue to do that all the way around and then we're gonna fasten this off and this part is then officially done. Okay, number 29 is done and now I just want you to pull up on the yarn. Make sure you cut it first and what we're going to use is that you'll see that there's still a hole and we're gonna put a darning needle on this particular piece here or on this particular strand. Okay, and what I want you to do is that I want you to just weave it in and out of the, the remaining stitches that you see and what we're gonna do is like clothesline it together. So we just continue to go around and you see I'm really not pulling it tight at this point but I'm going to right now. So we're gonna pull everything tight and it will bring it all to conclusion like so and then I'm just gonna just go across the, the bottom just in a couple directions just to make sure it really is closed so I really can't see anything going on and then once you get that done you can just tie it off and then be done. So this component would be done for today. So let's move on to part number 11. So let's move along to part number 11. There's only four rounds. I wouldn't even bother to have a stitch marker for this one. There's only four rounds so it's not hard to lose count but you just check off your boxes as you go and let's get started and you'll need a three and a half millimeter size E crochet hook for this particular part. So you're going to make a magic ring first like we have already in the past just to get started. So here we go. Okay, so it says to do, what does it say to do? Work four single crochets into the magic ring. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, and four. And now what I wanna do is I'm not gonna use a stitch marker for this one because it's so such a small part is that I'm gonna pull everything tight and then I'm gonna carry on. So the, so that was round number one. So round number two is increased times four. So the next, um, four will be just an increase. So there'll be two single crochets into each. So I'm just kind of physically counting on my own. So this is two and then there'll be two in this one for three and then there'll be two in this one for four. Okay, so that was round number two. So let's move along to three and four. What I am gonna do because I'm kind of self-conscious is that I'm gonna put a stitch marker right in the spot here because I need to go around for three and four as a single crochet each and I know I will forget. So this one I will use a stitch marker right at this point. So you can put stitch markers in at any time. And so basically rounds three and four are just one single crochet into each and then I just want you to fasten off and just make it an extra long tail so you can use it to sew it onto your project at the end. Once you have your part done, so I've just gone all the way around for three and four, I just wanna uh, just trim off an extra long tail because I'm gonna use that for sewing at the end and we'll have to put some light stuffing in there um, when we get to the assembly process as well. Just wrap the hook and just pull through. 
like so. So now I can remove my stitch marker. This uh, piece is from the magic circle which I would just probably tuck inside of this because nobody's gonna ever see it anyway. If you trim it um, too short then it is a magic circle. Your circle will fall apart on you. So just uh, that's it's it for number 11. So I'm gonna put this aside and then we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do with that in a bit. Okay, part number 12, three and a half millimeter size E crochet hook. We need two of these drumstick looking things and this is what we're going to be doing today. There's not too many rounds and then part 13 that will conclude off today's mystery for what we're doing for the components. So let's uh, get started on making one of these. You'll need a stitch marker definitely for this as well as a three and a half millimeter size E crochet hook today. So let's start off making a magic ring. We've already shown how to do that several times. And if you've been following this particular series uh, we really covered it extensively in the beginning. So a magic ring and then it says to put eight single crochets into the magic ring. So let's uh, do that. So just coming inside the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, I want you to put a stitch marker underneath that eighth one there. So just pull it up. Therefore we know where to stop and start. Put your hook back in. Grab your straggler string and pull tight and that will close that circle. So let's uh, begin the next round. Okay, round number two, we're immediately just gonna jump to the first one. It's a continuous round and it will be an increase into each one going all the way around. So one and two. So there will be two single crochets into each one going all the way around for this particular round. So do that and I'll see you back here in a sec. We'll move up another row. Make sure you are moving your stitch marker every time. You know what, I'm coming I'm almost done. So make sure every time you uh, are finishing around you move up your stitch marker. I'm gonna show you that in just a sec um, because then you can always keep count and making sure your project stays in balance. You can buy stitch markers if you wish. Um, I like spare yarn. I just never lose it. <laughs> That's primar primarily my reason but I also like to drag my string up through a project so I can actually see where the stopping starting is for the entire rounds as I, that I do. So here's the last one. I can see by the stitch marker it is the last one and I'm gonna put two into this one. So then once I get that last one in I grab the, go underneath the stitch and pull the stitch marker underneath it and therefore that signifies the next one. Let's move up to the next row. Okay round number three, easy, easy. So three single crochets in a row. So one and two and three and then it says to do an increase so the next one is gonna have two single crochets into that one. That's an increase. Okay, so the repeat pattern is one, two, and three and then an increase so there's two in that one. Please do that all the way around. Okay, rounds four, five, and six are all the same. One single crochet into each. Make sure you mark your Mark it as you go and pass by the stitch marker. Move your stitch marker up. So rounds four, five, and six, one single crochet into each. So round number seven is interesting. Now it's gonna be a little bit different going forward. So you see single crochet decrease times six and then it says two single crochets after that. So when you go to do the decrease you're gonna go single crochet for the next one and then decrease for the next and you keep repeating that all the way around. Now what's gonna happen is that you'll be left with two empty stitches at the end and that's why it says two single crochets and you'll be filling those in with two single crochets at the end. So just continue just a one single crochet and then decrease the next one single crochet, decrease the next and when you get all the way around you'll be left with two empty uh, single crochets and you fill those in with a single crochet each. After this we're gonna stuff it and uh, just lightly and then we'll continue along to round number eight. So round number eight I have stuffed it as you can see here and we're gonna carry on. So this one is like round number seven. So single crochet decrease. This time it's times four and there will be two single crochets that left at the end that you're just gonna fill in with the single crochet. So okay so let's start off and we're gonna do one single crochet the next and then a decrease. Okay. Okay, and then one single crochet 
and then a decrease. So continue that same patterning all the way around. You're gonna be left with two single crochets at the end of this round and you'll just fill those in with a single crochet each as per the instructions. Now at any time you can fill in with stuffing the more that you go. So that's up to you to do that okay. So just you don't need for me to tell you that. So what we have for round number nine is three single crochets and then a decrease. So three, so one, two, and th three, and then a decrease. And continue to do that all the way around. You can only do it one more time anyway and you'll be back at the stitch marker. So I've just stuffed it a little bit more and round number 10 and 11 is just one single crochet into each. So please do that for rounds number 10 and 11. So rounds number 12 we're going to start increasing. So this one here is uh, two single crochets in a row. So one and two. And then the next one is an increase. So there will be two into this one. Do that same thing all the way around. And when I'm looking at the instructions you'll be left with two single crochets left at the end. And let me continue. So just one and two. You'll be left with two single crochets at the end and uh, you just have to do one single crochet into each. Okay so there's my increase and as I said there will be two left and then it will be one in a single crochet into each of these to finish that round off. And let's just move up the stitch marker at that point. Okay rounds 13 and 14 both the same. Again a single crochet into each. And see how I've got this really loose um, loop right here. I wanna make sure it gets it nice and tight cause that'll be very visible in the long term. So just single crochet into each for rounds number 13 and 14. Okay round number 15 we only got two more rounds to go and we're done. So this one is a decrease times five. So every time you, you get two in a row just decrease it for so one. So decrease again and keep doing that all the way around. So keep decreasing all the way around for round number 15. And finally the last round for this one is that you'll decrease and you'll times that two. So there will be de two decreases in a row and then you'll be left with one stitch and then it says to do one single crochet at the end anyway. So, so it was to decrease for one and you'll do a decrease again for two and then you got one stitch left over and then that'll be just a single crochet on its own. So what I want you to do then is we want to trim the tails off. So we want to leave an extra long string again like we have been all along. We might have to use that later and I just want you to pull it up like so. And you, we can clean this up because this is not supposed to be pointing like this but we can clean it up later um, and as we figure out exactly what we're doing at this particular point. So we have one more component for week number four. So here we are for part number 13 and we just need to create this flat panel just like so. It's a consisting of 19 rows. You can see the check boxes but we're going to be doing a rows number one and two and there will be some increasing there and it will make sense when you see it on the character. Um, and then basically we're just gonna carry on do three to 19 on our own. It's just single crochet back and forth and then leaving on a really long tail in order to, to do all the the fastening on process to the character. So let's say begin you're gonna need a four millimeter size G crochet hook and whatever yarn that you're using today. So let's begin four millimeter size G crochet hook. Start off with the slip knot and we want to chain a total of 29. I'm not gonna chain 29 on camera with you. I'll just get you started. So remember that the one on the hook never counts as one. So we have one, two, three, four and five. Go all the way to our 29 and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, I have my 29 on my hook at this moment and basically what I wanna do then is that I want to start off the instruction. So it says single crochet second chain from the hook and across the chain. So second one from the hook and then just single crochet and I, did you see that I turn my, my uh, um, chain upside down? I just think it does a nicer finish when you do that way. It'll be right on the bottom. So just single crochet across the top of your chain. So I've done a single crochet all the way across my chain. Let's turn around and go for row number two. So row number two we're gonna start off and we're going to chain one. So row number two is the only unique row out of this whole thing and uh, out of this particular component. So we're gonna do an increase right away. So the very first stitch will be an increase. So there'll be two single crochets there and you have a choice. You can single crochet here and count the 26 that it's asking you or just know that the very last stitch you have to do an increase which I would 
I'm not even gonna bother to count. So just a uh, single crochet across your chain and then the very last um, stitch just do an increase. So put in two single crochets here. So this is the only row that it requires this. And as I promised the very last chain or the last stitch is an increase. So there's two single crochets into that one. So that was around our row number two. So let's begin round our rows number 13 or 3 to 19. Sorry about all that. So 3 to 19 is just one chain one, one single crochet into each as you go all the way across. And you're gonna continue to that and I want you to do this all, uh, on your own. So go from all the way from 3 to 19 and then I want you to leave a very long tail and we're gonna use that to fasten it to the character as well. So it goes 3 to 19, fasten off and that will conclude your components for week number 4. So here we go off camera I've been making this and what I wanna do is that I want to make sure that when I do the last tail here I wanna make sure that I can at least sew it all the way around here, here, in here so you make sure you leave enough string to do that. So it's better to over plan it than it is to not have enough in this particular case. So grabbing your scissors um, just start to, uh, just trim that yarn like so and then I'm just gonna take the tail and pull it through that loop and I'm good to go. I actually did uh, a color ball change too at this point. So just make sure if you've done that at any point just get rid of that as well and then um, basically see I just went from one ball to the other. The only way you can really tell that is that you see how the patterning is just kind of going up like this and then it suddenly changes here. That's because I've changed the ball. So you know it is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do. Don't wanna waste yarn and that's how it's gonna be. So have you guessed it right? Now we're going to solve and go through some of the assembly to take in your mystery from looking like a heap of body parts to a finished part. We'll cover that next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. This heap of body parts is the Mystery Amigurumi. Now I purposely when I did this tutorial I purposely held it upside down so that it was kind of confusing people but in actual fact this is the base of the Amigurumi and here are all the little components. So what is it? Let me show you in just a sec. Okay drum roll please. Here we go. This is what you've been making. Here it comes. You have been making yourselves two amigurumi projects. You've been making mama and baby kangaroo and isn't this really cute? So you can see that the tail and you can see that the body and more. So you've been making actually two projects and the baby actually sits in the pouch of the mummy. So then you have two so you can actually really give this as a great gift you know mama and baby. And we also have another version um, that's very similar to it. It's actually the same pattern but is done in multiple colors. And so you can see that the yarn is slightly different so therefore you get a different height to it. And uh, this is one of them and of course the babies right here. So you've had a lot of fun with the colors and basically let me take you through some of the components because what has been throwing people off is this item that appears to be a big chest pawn as well as the legs and let me cover that in just a moment. So on my website we have the final instructions and these are the assembly instructions just like you see and it's a step by step tutorial uh, in visual format so you can actually see everything that you need to do. So you can actually see like the, the chest pawn that we've been doing. So the chest pawn was the big actual body itself that you can see there and then all the components are basically mounting to it and we have the, the face uh, being uh, done here as well as we have the legs. So there's actually four sheets here on everything that you need to know in order to be successful and being able to put it together. The hardest thing that I think that you'll have to just visualize in your mind is that the legs. So the legs actually you've been thinking that they're maracas. <laughs> At least that's what I saw people saying but in actual fact you see how they're bent? So this becomes the leg and the kind of the jumping foot of the kangaroo. So that's probably the, the most interesting thing and the baby one also is doing the same thing. So the baby one is kind of just bent just slightly as you can see. So you can see all the little different components and you know you can kind of pose them if you wanted to. If you wanted to put a little wire inside um, just be conscientious if you're giving it away to a child that you don't want them um, to be harmed in any way. So we also have like the pouch that's been done on the base right here. You can see it's just sewn into place and then the baby kangaroo just goes right in there. 
is that called the Joey? I think it's called the Joey. So you can see everything is going there. So the whole instructions basically and how to assemble are all included for you and basically it's up to you now to submit us a final of your of your amigurumi. You can see that even the final touches of even adding the feet strings you know it's just the little things like this and the eyes. There's not too much uh, sewing detail on these but you can always add more if you wish and you can see that there's ears and etc. that you've been making all along. So this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed uh, doing this particular tutorial. It's been a really kind of cool. So now I gotta finish my own and you can see all the different little components were done on the final page on how everything comes together just like so. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Thank you so much for joining us with the mystery and I hope to see you all back here real soon. Bye bye.